Christ is risen. Welcome to worship and thank you to all of you for coming. Delightful as always to be gathered in. The theme for all of Easter has been living toward life a step at a time. The gospel this morning comparing us to vines and Christ to the vine and us to branches. We'll talk about that growth, that life ever so slowly, a cell at a time, as well as a step at a time, but new life just the same. We worship as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may pray the words of the hymn as it is sung.
have lost their power. Through the promise of are born anew to a living hope, your sins are forgiven. The spirit of the risen Christ is alive in you and calls you to live in joyful freedom and service. Amen. Let's pray together. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from the first letter of John, chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we, we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected, is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. And the psalm is Psalm 22. We will read it responsibly as printed in the bulletin. From you comes my praise in this great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before God, for dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come, They shall proclaim God's deliverance to the people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. Children may come forward for the children's sermon. Jameson and Ariana, you want to come down here, come on. Yes, you do. Good morning. Good morning. First first of all, I've got an easy question. Are you alive? 
If you're alive, raise your hand. You are. Even the boys are alive, I promise. I want you to think about how you know you're alive. And I brought something that's going to help us think about this. What do you think this is? What kind of stick do you think it is? It's a yard stick. I know that because I found it in my yard. So that means you can measure. You can measure things with this. Like if we had a pail of water, I could stick this in. I could put it in my lawnmower, see how much gas I've got in the lawnmower tank. Could put it in a can of paint, see how much paint I've got. It's a yard stick. Very useful. Is it alive? There's a disagreement in the house. I don't think it's alive. Did it used to be alive? What happened? It died. Why did it die, Luke? Because it broke off the tree. Was that what you were going to say too, Jocelyn? It broke off the tree, and it can't live except to be on the tree. And now it's all dry, and, and, and it, it can't live anymore. So when I ask you if you're alive, what the sticks helps us know is we're alive because we're connected to God. Mary just read these words. It's not first that we love God, but that God loves us. So God helps us breathe. We don't decide to breathe. God just helps us breathe. God keeps our heart beating, keeps our muscles strong, grows good things in the world for us to eat, like what apples and Bananas and chocolate. Yeah, good, good things. And so what, what the Bible is going to teach us today is that we really only live because we're connected to God. And we're going to think about ways to be connected to God. A couple of these guys are in confirmation, and we're, worry, we're working on knowing what the Bible says. But when the Bible says, abide in me, this is going to take it a step deeper. So when you hear a Bible passage, ask yourself, what word really stands out to you? What do you hear in this passage? What difference does that make? And we, the more and more the word comes through us then to bring life. So I'm really glad you're alive. I've got something to make you stronger. Pass it around, please. And hope that... As we read the gospel now, you'll think about being alive in God, okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, alive because of you. Keep us connected to you, to your word, to your spirit, to your breath, to your life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me go back. Thank you for coming up. You may stand for the reading of the gospel. From the gospel of John, chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears wounds to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch can, cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The 
The text in my daily devotional for Wednesday was from the book of 2 Peter in the New Testament. It is this, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. When it feels to us that God is slow in moving, acting, fixing, it's a beautiful verse. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. It got me thinking about slow things. When is it good that things are slow? In the morning, if the alarm clock, a slow melt is a very good thing. It helps and it prevents flooding. Slow music is beautiful, as is slow dancing, right? I'm glad that not all music is slow, but the classical composers were so wise. Symphonies and sonatas all alternate between slow and fast movements. When things have been too fast for too long, slow is really good. And slow music calms us, quiets and soothes us. I'm pretty sure I'd already sent my recipes in for the cookbook. When our daughter, Anna, gave us one that's called end of season spaghetti sauce. You take the last of the tomatoes off your tomato vines. You just quarter them, mix them with diced onions, peppers, and spices, and bake it in a slow oven for about four hours. You don't even have to peel the, toma the uh, tomatoes. The peelings just dissolve in that slow heat. And there's something about this slow roast that melds those flavors. Now that I'm getting you all distracted, you didn't get chocolate, now you're thinking about spaghetti. The flavor is to die for. Simmer is a slow word, and every chef knows it's a very good one. Our worship is going to be in John 15 for two weeks. Today we're thinking about abiding and growing. These first eight verses talk about fruit, and they prepare us for the, for the rest of the chapter, which is about bearing the fruit of Christ, which is love. That fruit of love will be our focus next week. This week, we need to be patient. Remember, God's patience is salvation. We take time today to learn to take time, to listen for slow growth to listen to Jesus' teaching about abiding and only then a grow growing. There'll be three takeaways to the sermon. First was started in the children's sermon. To live is to be firmly connected to God, the source. Second is that growth is slow. And the third is pruning, though it looks like the opposite of growth, is essential for fruitfulness. Connected to the source of life, slow growth, and then pruning. The first thing the gospel makes clear is that we don't live by our own power. We cannot make our hearts beat. Every breath is a gift. We can only love because we have first been loved. Our children's sermon rehearsed the gifts through which God mediates life, water and air and nutrients and touch. This is true for us as it is for the trees. We need to be connected to these, have these, live these. We live when we abide in the gifts of a generous creator who made a bountiful creation. And we aren't single branches. We don't look like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. In the church, we're surrounded by branches. This too is essential for life. When the Bible says abide, I can't help but think about 150 years, how long Springdale has been rooted in this place. And not just in this place, but in the same essential practices of gathering, listening, praying, eating. Singing. Springdale was here 18 years before Dakota was a state. I could wish we were looking directly at that old maple out here just on the north side of the church, a beautiful symbol of branches 
abiding in the vine over time. To be connected to the source and gifts of life in God are essential for us to live. I think one of the reasons the pandemic has been so hard on us is that we were cut off from the sources of life. We, we felt alienated and separated. There'll be more on that in a minute. For now, we're here to nurture the connection and to trust the life and love that will come from it. A branch growing in a tree is so slow, imperceptible. You can't see it grow. If you didn't have a way to measure it, there'd be no way to know it's growing. And you can even then you can only really see it in spans of a year, not spans of a, of a week or a month. We have two relatively new maple trees in our backyard. When I sit at the picnic table on my deck, I measure the top of the tree against my neighbor's siding up on top. And I count the numbers of boards the tree is down. And then a month later, I count again, has it grown another half a board or so? By the end of the summer, I may not be able to see the top of my neighbor's house. My tree is growing, but it's slow, imperceptible. We need to be connected. That's the first thing this word says. And this connection, abiding, takes time. It means to dwell, to stay, to be attached, to stick with, to endure. These are slow words. God patiently gives life even when we are not paying attention. But we're so much more focused, so much more trusting, so much more alive when we do pay attention. We want to pay attention so we know we grow. To abide in Jesus is to continue day in and day out in God's word, in prayer, in communion with other people who listen to and love and abide intentionally in God. The word disciple makes the word discipline. It takes time and attention and focus. I told you the promise next week is that the fruit is going to be love. We can be so eager for love, we want to rush it. But if a fruit grows on a branch before the branch is strong enough, the branch breaks. Even a tomato needs to grow before it can bear fruit. An apple tree takes five to eight years before it bears fruit. A grape takes three. It takes time to know and trust God. Love needs that time time with God and with people to learn to trust and care and love. So it takes time. And what makes it more complicated is that the time isn't always moving forward, getting bigger, doing more. To make the point sharper, Jesus knows that to bear more fruit, a vine dresser also prunes. Ouch. Jesus told us that to bear more fruit, the vine dresser prunes. I've told you a couple of times about my friend Dick, the apple orchard friend in New Ulm. He'd spend the whole month of November. There's a simple answer. Why does God prune our so the sun, S-O-N, can shine on our fruit? Growth for fruit bearing is not a do not pass go, do not collect $200 kind of straight line. Pruning doesn't explain all of pain or suffering. Sometimes cutting can be deadly, but done by a master gardener, by a vine dresser, pruning serves the growth and the fruitfulness of the tree. You don't just want more branches and by all that's going on around us that we lose sight of life as gift or sight of the giver of life. We think the point is more. The point is not more. And pruning reminds us. Pruning may be those things that happen that cause us to refocus, to look again, to claim the most important and vital. When I say it isn't always about more, I'm thinking again about COVID. COVID killed way more than pruning, but also stopped a lot of people. It forced us to take a new look 
and listen and learn that there's more to life than perpetual motion and you discover it when you stop and listen. I've, I had friends with Josh, the, the friend of mine who's preached here a couple of times, helped with the young adult thing last fall. He told me that the um, track team at Augustana is now fully vaccinated because almost all of them got the disease and it knocked them on their rears. It was a realization of what we need to take seriously, he said. It was a realization. What did you realize in this time? I, one of the things I hope we're realizing is how important it is to be together. When we couldn't be together, we're more aware of that now. Realizing we need to be fruitful or that something's getting in the way of fruitfulness can be a painful realization. We, need, we may need to cut back or redirect or otherwise reinvest. Sometimes we call them wake-up calls, forks in the road, turning points. They're almost always a loss of sometimes. Some branch has to let go, be taken down. But something when something is cut away, the sun shines in and we see what really matters. I decided today to tell you about a day that Susan and I were pruned mightily. It was the day before classes started at Augustana, the fall of 2012, and just probably a week into Susan's school year. At the end of the workday, I met a friend in the parking lot, and we decided we'd meet for a burger at a place in our neighborhood. Susan and I walked to meet our friends. As we stepped into the corner of 57th and Cliff in one of those, suddenly time is in slow motion and you don't really know what to do, is, what is happening moments. It was just time kind of stopped. A car turning onto 57 struck Susan. Why it didn't hit me too is a mystery we'll never understand. People ask me, well, Paul, did you jump? Well, I suppose I jumped. It was, you know, it was, a. I was grateful from that first moment that I knew that it hadn't killed Susan. And I think of it every time a car pedestrian accident does. But almost everything else was cut away for weeks and months and some of them for years. All the meetings, all the preparations that go into the start of a school year that we think are so essential, so absolute, how will we get this all done? None of that mattered. The school year went on without us. She was bedridden for more than three months and in therapy for two years. In 2014, two years later, when we ran a 5K together, the photo made our Christmas card. When students asked me what I'd learned, I said, don't wait until you're in a crisis to be grafted into community. Did you hear the verb grafted? like a branch attached, dwelling in God and in community. For as busy and productive as Susan and I like to be, we learned again that life and especially healing are gifts beyond us. We couldn't do it alone and they took a lot of time. We need to see the sun. Every breath is a gift. Healing is slow and painful, and sometimes one step forward, two steps back. Jesus' gifts in these times are mediated by others. Prayers, visits, encouragement, compassion, not to mention food, cleaning our house, raking our yard, were connections that brought healing and life a step at a time. One takeaway of this sermon is to know God as the source Growing is slow. That gets us very close to this promise that love is coming. Love was maybe never more clear to us than it was in the fall of 2012. In preparation for next week, today the gospel stops us, turns us, and otherwise prunes so that we're focused on 
bearing fruit. To hear it, we, we need a slow song. We need to let the word simmer till the flavors overwhelm all dark stuff and teach us to love. Those who abide in me, Mary read, abide in love. More on that next week. Amen. Bye.
We pray for the whole people of God to abide in the life and promise of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Living God, we pray for the faith to abide in your Easter life. Strengthen us each day to in your word, in prayer, in community, in service, and in trust that the life you give grow in and through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we pray for the power of roots and vines, branches and fruit to inspire our gratitude and care for your creation. Our gratitude and generosity with food and our awe and wonder at the beauty you create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we pray for all who are sick or injured to receive new life and healing and hope. Bless Robin, Jerry, Eileen, Scott, Penny, May Lou, Sheila, Nancy, Dwayne, Davis, Julie, Marie, Marge, Dorothy, Jason, Jerry, Bill, Eric, Eddie, Missy, Shirley, Cheryl, Richard, Sean, and Lemoyne, with your presence and healing. Continue to guide your world in the face of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our hearts. Please give peace to the family of Jenny Gilbertson, still all who threaten violence, empower all who serve peace, and guide our leaders toward your promise of peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks to be gathered by your Spirit. We thank you for calling us to teach, and we especially pray for our work in Sunday school, confirmation, and anticipation of Bible school in June. Bless us with eagerness to invite, share, and celebrate with all who hunger for community, forgiveness, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Take a moment to just reflect on abiding in peace. Peace is another one of those slow gifts. We're eager to jump up and, and extend it, but for now we'll, we'll abide in peace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, help us abide in you and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ in his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. 
Again, thank you for being gathered in worship today, for abiding in Christ and in church. Good to see all of you. I want to extend thanks to Ange for reinvigorating Sunday school this spring. They'll meet for the last time today. Confirmation meets for the last time on Wednesday. Um, summer is nearing. I'm anticipating our, our discussion on the Ole Rovag Giants and the Earth book tomorrow at 3 o'clock here at the church and hope many of you can participate in that and that you've enjoyed the book. The flowers in our worship of, Jilly, of Ginny Gobrinson, who, um, whose funeral was here on Tuesday. We pray for Jill and Grace and God's peace for all their family. Um, last week, we were all given a gift of a pen or several to celebrate Springdale's 150th. Should we do a show of hands today? How many gave a pen to somebody and told them about our church? Oh, quite a few of you. Good job. There are more pens out. Um, you can do that again. If you can't think of anybody right now, you could use the pen to write a note of encouragement. When pruning is happening or the growth is slow, we need each other to encourage. So our thanks for these pens and please do use them as an instrument of invitation. Those are the announcements I have. Are are there any other announcements? Go ahead, Pam. And if you win the top prize, we need to fix the foundation of the church. Just saying. <laughs> you may stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.